everybody to our session on the call end game on our beautiful planet. Um, really happy to see a full room of people um, to talk about this issue that's really hot at the moment. And um, but it's not over yet, and we hope it's going to be over very soon. And today um, we are, will be looking at the state of play in different countries around the world. And we have lined up a few speakers um, for you from all corners of the planet. And um, yeah, looking forward to uh, some interesting insights. Um, this is a workshop organized in cooperation between um, Lingo and the Beyond Copenhagen Cooperative. Um, Lingo is the Leave It in the Ground initiative. We are um, registered in Germany and based in Mexico and we work on solutions to keep fossil fuels in the ground. And this conversation is one of the steps towards keeping much of the coal that we have unburned um, so it doesn't affect our climate. So on behalf of the co-organizers, which is Beyond Copenhagen Collective, it's a collective of around 42 groups uh, in India, all across India. We also uh, extend a warm welcome and very good afternoon. We are working in India and neighboring countries in South Asia. And one of our major areas, it's not the only area, one of our major areas is uh, climate impact of coal and fossil fuels and how do we transition in a just and fair manner. Not just a transition, but a transition which is also just and fair and equitable. So we are happy to co-organize with our longtime friend uh, Kale and the organizations. Uh, we will also uh, try to focus on, apart from the statistical figures and what is happening in coal, we will also try to focus a little bit, all our speakers, somewhat on what is happening with the struggles against coal and fossil fuels, how the struggle groups, people, communities are responding, and what is the interface between them. So to different levels, we'll try to do that. So again, welcome and namaste. Um, before we um, go to our country cases, um, I would like to give a little bit of uh, global context um, on where we stand. And um, we have elaborated this infographic to sort of map the terrain of the climate crisis. And you can see on the left hand side the reserves of fossil fuels, um, of coal, oil, and gas. And um, this is what we have already burned, and this is what is still in the ground as of now, but could be extracted. Those are booming reserves. And as we burn these fossil fuels, the CO2 levels rise. As CO2 rises, the temperature rises, and then we get climate impacts. And you can see some very heavy impacts already here, hurricanes, floods, even uh, climate war in Sudan. And um, we are expecting many more impacts. And when you go beyond two degrees, we are looking at things like 79% of coral reefs going extinct, one billion people livelihoods affected um, in the <coughs> oceans, green <coughs> melting and rising seas by seven meters and other things and some of them like the permafrost melt um, are tipping elements which will then again release more greenhouse gases and these tipping elements are shown here by these arrows and um, you can see that sometimes one arrow feeds into the next and that is the dynamics of runaway climate change where one domino piece pushes over the next one and then it doesn't stop and here we have methane clad rates which are on the ocean floor and can heat the planet much more than anything that we are doing so this danger of, clim of runaway climate change is very high if you go beyond two degrees and you can even see this dynamics maybe starting before and that is why this temperature target um, that's established by the COP is very, very important so that we don't trigger this runaway process that we cannot stop even if we stop um, burning fossil fuels. Now, what is very worrying is that this side of the image, the extraction of fossil fuels, is not talked about at the COP. 
all oil and gas is not part of the negotiations. Um, countries continue extracting coal, oil and gas. And even more so, not only what is here is supposed to get extracted, countries are still looking for more. Exploration is still going on and even public money is being spent on looking for more oil, coal and gas. So this means, as of now, the plan of governments and of corporations is to extract all of this and find even more. So there's a big um, gap between what is needed, stopping fossil fuel extraction before we go, get, go beyond these lines, and what is happening still on the ground. But our hope and our conviction is that we can stop this in time. Um, this is not going to be a slow phase out of many decades, it has to happen very quickly and to look at the dynamics of how an exit to coal can happen quickly, we would like to hear from what the situations are and what the players are and what the dynamics are of coal in these different countries that we will be hearing about today. And maybe one more thing to say about this infographic between today and 2030, um, we put this asterisk. So what will happen in this time depends on all of us in the room. It's not a, a task for coming generations, it's a task for our generation. And the task is to start shutting this down, to resist and to start getting out of um, coal, oil and gas extraction. And this asterisk is repeated here in all the different places where people are already struggling against this extraction. And it is really about the success of this struggle, of these struggles, whether we will be able to stop short of runaway climate change and keep our planet in a livable shape. So these struggles are key <coughs> for the future of humanity, I would say. And that's why we would like to look at them today in detail in different countries.